Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem reverse bits. And this happens to be another problem from the blind 75 list or list of common leak code problems that we've been tracking in this spreadsheet. We have a solution for the vast majority of them and I'll be doing a few more of the binary questions. The one today we'll be doing is this one reverse bits. So this is a good problem to kind of go over and learn or refresh yourself on the bit manipulation operations. So we're given a 32-bit unsigned integer and basically we want to reverse all of the bits of this integer. So like in this example, this is the integer represented in binary. Of course, we might not be given the integer in binary. You know, the, we might be given the integer 4, which in binary we know it looks like this and then we'd want to reverse all of the bits for it. So basically, we would, you know, the reversal is going to look something like this. Right, and then we want to return that reversed integer. Of course, we'll be returning a one value. So let's say this is the 32-bit integer, and let's just say it's four just because we don't want to do a super long binary integer like this. There are many ways to kind of do this problem right. Suppose we declare an output variable for result, and this is where we put the last bit, the 31st bit and then over here is where we put the zeroth bit right so we have 32 bits in the output initially we'll just set all of these to zero right so we want to go bit by bit in the input right we'll start at the ones bit we want to get what is over here if it's a zero or if it's a one and then we want to take it and then put it over here in this case it's a zero so we're just going to put a zero over here right basically we're reversing right we're taking the bit from here putting it in this spot, right? Just in reverse order, pretty much like we would do with reversing a string. Next, we're gonna go to this one, put it in the next spot. So we'll have another zero here. And then we'll take a look at this one, put it in the next spot. So we'll have a one here. And then since the remaining of all of these are zeros, then we're just gonna have zero, zero, zero. Uh, in the entirety of this. So uh, obviously before when I showed us just reversing these four, we ended up getting an output of one, but you can see when we actually do it with 32 bits, the result changes, right? So, and they specifically tell us this is just a 32 bit integer. So this is gonna be a pretty large integer and we're, this is what we're gonna end up returning, right? So it's pretty straightforward to understand what exactly we're doing, at least with the solution that I'm showing you. Now the question is, how can we actually do these operations? For example, how can we go bit by bit, get the first bit, get the next bit, get the next bit, all the way until we get to the end, right? How can we go and get each bit? Well, one way in binary is to just take uh, this bit, right? And it with a one, the and operation, right? Logic and. What we're saying is, if the, since this is a zero, right? If we take zero and it with one, we get the output to that is gonna be zero, right? Which makes sense because we wanna know if this is a zero or a one. So if we and it with a one, we'll get zero if this value is a zero. That's exactly what we want. If this value is a one and we and it with a one, then we get one, right? Which, which is good because if this is a one, then we want to get a one in the output. So that's the operation we're gonna do logic and to figure out what the bit is. Now that's easy in the case where we're just looking at the ones place over here. But what if we wanna look at this next spot? We wanna look at the uh, twos place, right? And then what if we wanna look in this spot, et cetera, et cetera, how are we gonna do that? Well, instead of taking this input value and then anding it with a one, we're gonna and it with a one shifted to the left each time we you know, move a different spot in the input, right? How can we shift a one to the left? That's also another binary operation. So for example, if we had something like zero, one, and then we do the shift operation to the left, this is a bit shift operation. If we shift it to the left, all what it does is it shifts all of the bits to the left by one and it replaces the one spot with a zero. So in the output, we'll get this. When we shift this by one, we'll get this. We'll have shifted the bit to the left by one. And notice how if we have a one over here and then a zero over here, and then we have zeros all the way for the remaining of it, when we get the output value, it's also going to be a 32-bit integer, right? But this is the only spot we're gonna care about because the rest of the spots are gonna be zero by default 
because if we and zero with anything else, we're gonna get a zero in the output. Whether you know we have a one over here or not, if we and these together, we're gonna get a zero in the output. Okay, so that covers how we're gonna get each of these bits. Now, how are we gonna put them in the output? Remember how initially we had a, a result that was just filled with zeros, right? And we're gonna start at the beginning, take every, you know, if we have a one here, we wanna insert this one over here. If it's a zero over here, then we just wanna leave the output as a zero. And then we wanna to move to the next spot to the right and do the exact same thing. So we're gonna follow a similar pattern here. If we had a one, we would take the one, shift it to the left, by 31, right, because that's gonna be the spot all the way to the left. We're gonna take this, shift it to the left by 31, so then we'll have a suppose a one here and then zero, zero, zero. What we wanna do in this case is not logic and, but we wanna do logic or when we're trying to figure out what to replace it with. So for example, if we had a zero here, we would wanna replace this with a one. It works because we take zero or it, logic or it with one, we get a one. If we take zero logic or it with a zero, we get a zero. So if we had, instead of having a one here, if we just had a zero here, we wouldn't wanna replace this. We want, would wanna leave it as a zero. So that's what logic or can accomplish for us. And similar to the previous example, if we had something like this and we were trying to logic or this, right? We wanted wanna put this one in this spot. We don't wanna get rid of this one, right? Suppose we had already put a one over here. We don't wanna get rid of it. So notice how if we, if we, if we take this logic or it with this, we will end up changing this bit. This will be changed to a one, but this bit will stay the same, which is what we wanna do, because if we're gonna have a zero here and we're gonna have zeros in every other position, the other remaining bits are not gonna end up getting changed. If they are ones, they're gonna remain as ones. If they're zeros, they're gonna remain as zeros. So those are some kind of basics about bit operations, logic and, logic or, uh, bit shifting. And that's kind of all you need to be able to solve this problem in the simplest way. So now I think we are ready to dive into the code and it's gonna be a little bit shorter than you might expect. Let's declare that result variable that I said. So it's gonna be a zero, meaning all 32 bits of it are going to be initialized as zero. And we're gonna go through every single bit in the input end. So I'm gonna say for I in range 32, because we know it's gonna be up to 32. I think we could uh, change the logic of this while n is uh, you know, non-zero and we could continuously update n. I'm just gonna do it this kind of simple way. So remember, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna get the ith bit of n. So how can we do that? Well, remember, we were gonna take n and it with one to get the ith bit. But if we just and it with one every single time, we're only going to get the first bit, right? We wanna get the ith bit. So instead of anding it with one, we, well, we can take n, shift it to the right by i. I don't think that's what I said in the drawing picture. I thought, I think I said we we're gonna take the ones uh, bit and then shift it to the left. But if we actually take n, shift it all the way to the right, then in n, we will have the, the target bit that we're looking for and it will be in the ones spot. So then we can just take this and and it with one, and then we'll get the result bit that we're looking for in the ones spot. So this bit will be either one or it will be zero. And then we want to logic or it with the output to put that bit in the output. How can we do that? Is it gonna be enough to just say result logic or the bit? No, because if we do it like this, we're only gonna be updating the one spot of this result, but we wanna be updating it in the reverse order. We wanna start at the largest bit and then work our way down. How can we do that? Well, we have this I variable, right? It's gonna go from zero to 31. So how about we do this? We shift our bit to the right by 31 minus i. So on the first iteration of the loop, we will be getting the first bit from n and putting it in the 31 spot of the result. And the next iteration will be doing the opposite. We'll be getting the bit in index one from n and putting it in index 30 in the output. So then we're gonna keep doing that. And uh, you know, this is the operation we're doing and we wanna set the result equal to the result of this logic or operation. And that is the entire code. Once we're done with that, we can go ahead and return the result. So this is the simplest way to do it. It is constant time, big O of one, because we're guaranteed that there's gonna be 32 bits. So 
the solution is not going to scale regardless of whatever the input n is as long as it's 32 bits and where you know the memory we're using as well is just a single variable right so this is just an o of one time and space solution so i hope that this was helpful i hope it taught you a little bit about binary operations if it was please like and subscribe it supports the channel a lot and i'll hopefully see you pretty soon thanks for watching